Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Freehold Regional High School District Virtual College Fair. We've got an exciting session today. Before we begin, we'll go ahead and cover a few housekeeping items. Note that if you have questions, you can do so using the Q&A button to type your question to the presenter at any time. Also be advised that your microphone and camera are off. The panelists can't see or hear you. Also be aware that we have additional sessions available on the StriveScan website. So if you have interest in another institution, we'd encourage you to sign up accordingly. Lastly, note that a recording of this session will be made available on the StriveScan website at strivescan.com slash FRHSD. With those items complete, we'll turn it over to our first presenter from the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Hi everyone, um, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to share with you today and to share some information with you about uh, UMass Amherst. Uh, my name is Rachel Bukowski. I'm one of the admissions counselors here for the University of Massachusetts. Um, I'm also a proud alum. I graduated in 2012 with a bachelor's degree in psychology um, and a minor in education. Um, and I am the representative for New Jersey. So I'm going to share my email with, address with you at the end. Um, so feel free to reach out and contact me um, if you have any questions and I'll, like I said, be giving you that at the end. All right. And this is a six minute thing. So it goes by very quickly and I talk fast. So I apologize for that, but I wanna get some good information out to you. Um, so just a little overview about UMass. Um, so we are um, one of the top public research institutions in the country. Um, we are um, uh, the UMass Amherst is the flagship campus for the state of Massachusetts. So we're kind of like the main public school up here in Massachusetts. Um, we have over 24,000 undergraduate students, and then we have about 7,000 graduate students. So for a grand total of about 31,000 total students. Um, we are located in Amherst, Massachusetts, which is one of um, the top college towns in the country. And we are about two hours west of Boston. And then we're about three and a half hours from New York City. Um, so that's kind of you know, where we are uh, located within the state. Uh, we are outside of Boston. Um, we also have over 300 clubs and organizations. We're division one for athletics. Um, our hockey team actually just won the national championship this weekend. Um, so if you're a hockey fan, um, you're gonna have a lot of fun here at UMass because our hockey team is great. Um, lots of school spirit, you know, going along with our division one uh, sports. Uh, we have over a hundred um, academic programs and I'll talk to you a little bit about majors in a second. Um, and then my favorite um, kind of special thing about UMass is that we are number one for best campus dining. Um, so the food here at UMass is absolutely incredible. I would not exaggerate that. I'm a big foodie. Um, so the food is, is literally the best. Um, doesn't get any better than, than here at UMass. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is we are part of a five college consortium, um, which means that we're associated with four other schools in our area. And those are Smith College, Mount Holyoke College, Hampshire College, and Amherst College. So how this system works is you can take classes at those other four schools at no extra cost. That's already included in your tuition. So it's kind of a little fun fact about um, UMass. And then I just wanna share with you this slide. Um, I won't go through each of these. You can obviously read these on your own, um, but I do wanna kind of point out that um, our campus here at UMass is really is a very diverse campus. There are students from all over the country, from all over the world. Um, we have students who um, come from all different backgrounds, all different walks of life. And so I like to throw this out there, um, these kind of demographics out there, because what that means is that here at UMass, you are going to find students who are like you. You know, you're gonna find students who um, are interested in the same things you are, who are studying the same things you are, but you're also gonna find students who are interested in things that are different than you. And you're gonna meet students who are not like you. Um, and that's really what college is all about. Because we're a large public institution, you're gonna meet students from all over the world um, and who are interested in so many different things. And um, like I said, I think that's what college is all about, to meet students who are different than you. So these are our academic programs. Um, these aren't the whole list of majors. Um, I mentioned earlier, we have over 100 different majors here at UMass, um, but these are the schools and colleges. It would be tough to put over 100 majors on one slide. Um, it would be very small. So this is the list of schools and colleges. Um, but basically the main point I wanna mention here is that you don't have to know what you wanna study um, when you are applying to UMass. You, you can come in into our exploratory track program, which is basically just another name for undeclared. Um, but these are the schools and colleges. And then, like I said, we have over 100 majors um, kind of housed within these schools and colleges. This goes over just a little bit about our application timeline. Um, and all of this can be found online, so don't worry about remembering all of this stuff. Um, but basically, we have two deadlines. We have early action, which is November 5th, and then we have regular decision, which is January 15th. 
Um, and then early action for us is just a little bit different. We actually don't have a deferral process um, for our early action process. So it's just one kind of one thing to keep in mind. Um, we also do not have rolling admissions. So you do, do need to choose one of those deadlines to apply, like I said, either early action or uh, regular decision. And then May 1st would be the next deadline to keep in mind, um, which is if you have any senior friends out there right now, they're probably talking a lot about that May 1 deadline. These are all of the different things that we need from you in order to apply to UMass Amherst um, successfully. So we are on the Common Application. It's the only way to apply to our school is through the Common App. Um, and so uh, a lot of these different pieces of the application go with the Common App. Um, so a lot of these are just kind of additional things, little supplements part of the Common App, like the extracurriculars, the essay, um, the supplemental questions, that's all part of the Common App. Uh, we do require your transcripts, which we do recalculate um, every student's GPA who applies. And then we require one letter of recommendation, which needs to be from um, somebody in your academic world. So your teacher, your school counselor, something like that. Uh, we are test optional. So um, we are test optional for three years. Um, so this was our first year and then we'll be test optional for two more years. So if you are still debating on whether you wanna take that SAT or ACT, just know for UMass, we are test optional. And you can find out more about that on our website um, about that, what that means for UMass. And then also on this slide, it does show you the middle 50 percentile ranges to kind of give you an idea of where students were at from last year's class. Um, I always tell students, don't worry too much about the GPA because um, that is a recalculated weighted GPA that's up there. Um, but the test scores can be helpful, especially if you're debating on whether you want to send those test scores to, um, to UMass since we are test optional now. And then this is my contact info. So this is what I'll leave you with. Um, so my email address is up there. Um, so you can definitely reach out to me. Like I said, I am your admissions counselor. Um, also follow us on social media. That's definitely a good way to get all the up-to-date information. And then also um, the bottom there, we do have our virtual options. Um, we are still virtual. We are only offering in-person tours for admitted students at this time, starting next week, actually. So um, we don't have the release date for the um, tours for juniors um, and rising seniors yet. So definitely check out our webpage there. Um, and that's where you'll find out the update on that. Um, so thank you, everyone. Feel free to ask me any questions in the Q&A. And um, thank you again for having me. Thank you for sharing. We're on to our next institution, the Maine Maritime Academy. Thank you so much. Hey, everybody. I hope your night is going well. It's gotten warm up in Maine. Um, my name is Elizabeth Allaby, and I'm going to share with you um, a whole lot about Maine Maritime. So I hope that you are looking forward to it. Um, so a little bit about us. Uh, I'm actually gonna launch into a video and we'll, we'll hope that this will work out. Uh, our campus is definitely one that comes alive when you are here and it's sometimes hard to visualize uh, since we are a Maritime Academy, a state Maritime Academy. Many of our students are receiving uh, licenses from the Coast Guard to be able to work aboard vessels out at sea. Um, but that's not all that we are. So I'm gonna go ahead uh, and play this for you. And then I will chime back in with how to uh, apply and all of that good stuff. So strap in. And the other thing I wanted to say, a lot of this footage that we have are, um, was definitely taken pre-COVID. You won't see any masks. That's not the case on our campus at the moment. Uh, we have had students on campus both in the fall and in the spring. Everybody has been here um, and we have been masking. So just keep that in mind as you watch this.
hopefully you got a good feel for our campus. And like I said before, this footage was old, so uh, students on our campus have been wearing masks this whole time. Um, and we've been lucky since we're a small school, about 1,000 students, we've been able to have our students on campus. Um, since you were able to get a nice taste of campus, campus life, you saw our regimental students in uniform and you got to actually go into the bridge of our 500 foot training vessel and down into the engine room. Uh, hopefully you're getting a little bit excited for Maine Maritime Academy if you're interested. Um, so what I wanted to do was take a little bit of time just to talk about our application requirements. So we do require four years of high school English as well as four years of of high school math ending with trigonometry, pre-calculus, or calculus. Uh, the reason for that, we're a very STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math heavy school. So we want to make sure that you can hit the ground running when you get here academically. If you are uh, finishing um, and your math isn't quite at that higher level, uh, I still encourage you to reach out to us and we'll work with you to make sure that you're where you need to be to be successful here. We're also looking for you to have two of the three lab-based sciences on your transcript. And if you're pursuing engineering um, anywhere, especially here, I highly recommend you go ahead and you take that physics if that's an opportunity for you at your high school. Other things that we're looking for when you go to apply um, is uh, we're a common app school. So you'll have to fill that out, submit your transcript, one letter of recommendation. Um, and we're gonna remain test optional for the next year as well. Uh, and keep in mind those deadlines are similar to many colleges. I'm gonna just go ahead and fast forward. Um, feel free to contact me, elizabeth.alaby at mma.edu with any other questions that you have moving forward. Good luck with your search. Thank you. We're on to our next presenter from the Massachusetts Maritime Academy. And good evening, everybody. Yes, this is the other, one of the other six um, Maritime Academies um, outside, within the United States. My name is Joanne Robertson, and I am an assistant director in the admissions office. We're located in Buzzard Bay, Massachusetts, right on the Cape Cod Canal. We won't take you inside our training ship, but here is the TS Kennedy, um, soon to be replaced within the next few years. So if you're considering one of our um, license track majors, you will have the opportunity to go on the new training ship that'll be arriving soon. Quick facts, Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts is where we're located, right on the Cape Cod Canal. 1,700 undergraduate students. And as I said, we are a state maritime academy as well as a public university of Massachusetts, STEM-based, education with a regimented campus life. We are fully regimented. All of our on-campus students are part of the regiment. And we have 15 Division III varsity athletic teams. For academics, we have seven spectacular majors. Marine engineering and marine transportation are our licensed track majors, which ends with a bachelor's of science degree, as well as their Coast Guard licensure. Facilities engineering, energy systems engineering, emergency management, international maritime business and a marine science safety and environmental protection majors. All of our majors are learn, do learn. That's our philosophy at Mass Maritime. And experiential learning is a huge component of what our students do. Everyone in their first year has an experiential learning opportunity depending on their major. It could be on the ship or Bermuda or down in Costa Rica. Um, our students travel the world. STEM focus is what we are all about. And we have opportunities for our students to land both careers on sea and on land. The regiment, as I said, we are fully regimented, is an important part of what we do. It provides students with a huge launching pad for success, particularly in their first year. Uh, it's designed to build character and leadership skills. As you can see, all of our students are in uniform every day. It enhances our academic programs, as I said, by giving you that launching pad and that structure and extra help within the regimental um, structure to get you started on a good academic um, platform. And it also acts as a leadership lab on campus. What would be better after you finish your education that you present yourself as someone who led over 1600 students? You could do that if you were our regimental commander. For campus life, uh, it's pretty active with our athletics. As you can see here, we have all of our um, NCAA Division III athletics teams listed here. Student government um, controls all of the other clubs and organizations. You can join one of the existing clubs or create your own. We also have club and intramural sports, including water polo. 
uh, that students can participate in. And we also have some special events like Emory Rice Day, which is a day where everybody dresses down and has a lot of fun on some of the inflatables with food trucks and comedians and performers. We also have pop-up events, as well as our student lounges and our workout facilities. Um, this year with COVID, we are in person for classes and they've been very creative in terms of events. We've been having bonfires and um, socially distanced um, cornhole games for all of our students on campus. So we've been able to, as our previous presenters said, keep things safe, but still get an education and have fun. Um, it, we'll go more now into the admissions requirements. As it's, you can see here, the average G weighted GPA is a 3.1. Um, this year we were test optional. We will be deciding soon whether or not we're going to continue that policy, but you can see that there. Uh, the emphasis on our, is on the GPA and the academic rigor of your curriculum. We're looking for strength in math and science courses, four years of math, and also uh, we'd like to see four years of science. Energy Systems Engineering is our honors engineering program and is our most competitive for admission. And emergency management um, tends to fill up quite quickly as well because we have a lot of applicants for that. You can apply online or via the Common App. And, and as I said, you know, we were test optional for this year. Stay tuned uh, to find out this summer whether we will be test optional for next fall. So if you want to learn more about Massachusetts Maritime Academy, we are touring. We are offering tours three times a day during the week. So you can come to campus and register for a visit. Um, also, we have general info sessions, cadet chats, personal interviews are available via Zoom, and we have a virtual tour. So just go to www.maritime.edu and visit MMA. Thank you for your time, and you can email the admissions office with any additional questions. Joanne, thanks so much. We're on to our next presenter from Merrimack College. Hi there, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, my name is Jasmine Garber and I am an admission counselor here at Merrimack. I'm also a double graduate of Merrimack, so I am a very proud alum of the school. So I'm excited to share some information with you today. So our campus is located about 40 minutes north of Boston, right on the line of North Andover and Andover, and about 20 minutes south of New Hampshire. So we're really nicely positioned. Our campus um, is right in a suburban area. So you'll see it here. There's restaurants, shops nearby, neighborhoods. We're definitely not in the middle of nowhere, but also not in a really urban environment either. And we also have a tea station about a mile away from campus. In my time at Merrimack, I really enjoyed everything being on one piece of land. Everything's really easily accessible for our students. Overall, we have about 4,000 undergrad students and about 1,200 grad students. So we're not too small anymore, but we're not really big either. I think that we found our sweet spot in the sense that we're able to offer that big school feel while also offering personalized experiences for our students. Um, we are a Catholic Augustinian school, um, but you don't need to be Catholic to be a student with us. Those Augustinian roots really set the foundation for who we are on our campus in terms of our um, commitment to service, our commitment to knowledge, and our commitment to our community, not just the Merrimack community, but the surrounding communities around us. If that is the experience that you're looking for, we do offer mass daily, we offer clubs and organizations and service opportunities too. And as a student, you will have one requirement in terms of religion, and that is to take one course. Of our student body, you'll see a gender breakdown here, but we do have students of all different gender identities. And our student body is also becoming more diverse with um, coming from all over the US in over 30 countries. We also have about 18% students of color on campus. So we're really proud that we're able to continue supporting students of all different backgrounds. In terms of social life, um, we are division one across the board for all athletics in the Northeast Conference. So we have a very passionate campus. Um, we also have club and intramural sports. Club can be just as competitive as D1. Um, we're still going to local New England schools and um, the passion is still there. Um, we also have over 60 clubs and activities for students to choose from. So there's really something for everybody. Overall, I would say that our campus is very, very active. Um, we definitely have a high student body presence on our campus. In terms of academics, we have over 100 programs for students to choose from within five different schools. And some of our most newest, um, our newest programs are nursing, neuroscience, data science, music. Um, so we're really excited that we're able to continue growing those programs. 
Um, in terms of housing, um, we have guaranteed housing all four years for our students. And um, within those undergrad students, those 4,000 students, about 70% of those um, do take advantage of that across all four years. So I would say we're definitely not a suitcase school. This is a, um, a glance at our most recent class that came in. You'll see where they came from, um, their averages, you know, whether they came out of high school or, or another college. I like to point out the academic profile. You'll note that we have a, um, a student body from a 4.0 to below 2.5. So our application process is is very holistic in the sense that we really want to get to know who you are as a student. So yes, your grades matter and the classes that you took matter, but also who are you? So we'll look at your application, your essay, your letter of recommendation, and those um, other materials. So I don't want anyone to ever feel discouraged from applying to Merrimack. For the application process itself, we're either on the Common App or the Merrimack application. There's no fee to apply, um, and we don't use testing scores through the application process. The only exception to that is the nursing program, which I'll talk about in just a second. Um, so like I said, it's a very holistic process. We do require the transcript, the secondary school report, and one letter of recommendation. These will generally come from your guidance counselor or your school counselor, and then you'll see the deadlines on the left-hand side. We don't have any differences between our four deadline pathways aside from early decision being binding. Um, we really want students to choose what's best for them. So um, the benefit is if you apply sooner, you get to know sooner. Um, and if you apply later, you get more time on the application. But we don't have any differences with scholarshiping, housing, anything like that. For those folks who might be interested in nursing, um, that application, like I said, you will need testing scores next year if you're a junior or a rising senior. Um, and we do require an additional letter of recommendation, preferably from a math or science teacher. Every student that applies to Merrimack is automatically considered for our institutional aid and 99% of those students do receive um, either a grant or scholarship. Um, in addition, we offer federal aid too with the FAFSA application, which opens every year on October 1st. Um, but don't let the sticker price of Merrimack scare you. On average, a typical student will pay the bottom two right numbers. So that is it that I have for you today. I'm excited to share some more information with you. If you have any questions, definitely pop them into the Q&A um, box down below, um, but feel free to reach out to us too. Um, you can email us, call us. We also have a web chat bot that is manned every day from three to seven by current students. So I hope you have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Some great information indeed. We're on to our next institution, Nichols College. I hope everyone is having a good evening and thank you for joining us. So my name is Nathan. I'm one of the admissions counselors at Nichols College. Um, a little bit about Nichols. We are a small primarily business school and we are located in southern central Massachusetts in a town called Dudley. The next question I oftentimes get asked is where is that? So if I were to put it on a map for you, where the states of Connecticut, Rhode Island and Massachusetts all meet, we're just over the border on the Massachusetts side. So about 20 minutes outside of Worcester, about 45 minutes outside of Boston and Providence, and about an honest hour out of Hartford. Um, so we're located just in Southern Central Mass, like I said. Um, so the next slide I wanted to include was just a couple snapshots of campus. Um, I'm actually an alum of Nichols College. I graduated with the class of 2019. Um, and the campus during all of the different seasons was just absolutely gorgeous and one of my favorite things. So I did feel the need to just include a, a couple of different snapshots just because I know that we all don't have the capability to do campus tours now. Um, we at Nichols are fortunate and we are allowing campus tours. So if you do have the ability to make the trip to campus, I would always recommend it. Um, you can just visit our events page at nichols.edu forward slash events and book your individual private campus tour there. So next I want to talk a little bit about our undergraduate programs. Like I said, we are primarily a business school. A majority of our students are pursuing a BSBA or Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. Our largest concentration currently is our sport management program. That's followed behind by accounting and finance. Um, although yes, primarily a business school, we do have some fantastic liberal arts programs as well. Our largest programs within the liberal arts core are our criminal justice, and that's followed by psychology. But as you can see, we have a number of other majors available as well. 
So a little bit about our professional development seminar. So our professional development seminar is what I feel makes Nichols unique in a sense. It's our four year one credit course that all of our students, regardless of major, are gonna be required to take. And each year is gonna be tailored towards something a little bit different, essentially creating the most well-rounded business professional that we can imagine. Um, so year one is welcome to college. Let's make sure you know where your resources are and how to best utilize them. Let's start exploring majors and let's make sure that you're best prepared for success as a student here at Nichols College. Uh, year two is gonna be all about networking. So in year two, you're gonna create a LinkedIn account. You're gonna perfect cover letters, resumes, lots of job fairs, lots of alumni events, really just putting yourself out there in whatever industry you may be choosing to go into. Um, by year three, you'll have a major and hopefully have somewhat of an idea of what you hope to ultimately do with that major in your career post-college. So let's start to hone in on those specific skills. It's home to the biggest assignment, which is one of our mock interviews. That's when you pick a potential career that you can see yourself fulfilling after your time at Nichols. We'll bring someone in from that company, a company similar to it, and they'll sit down and interview you as if you were actually applying for that position, just so you can get the necessary industry-specific interview skills. Um, and then year four is all about life after college, less of a we need to address X, Y, and Z. Let's make sure that we know what we're going to be doing post-college um, in terms of budgeting salaries, in terms of the commuter system, where you should be looking if you are forced to move across country or whatever it may be for your dream job. Year four is making sure that you're best prepared for success life after college. So a little bit about internships. So a lot of times the PDS is the PDS or professional development seminar course is focused on internships. Internships are, are a required part of the Nichols College experience, and at some point in your four years, you will be fulfilling an internship. I'm a firm believer in finding out what you want to do is oftentimes about finding out what you don't want to do. So it's not uncommon for students to utilize two, maybe even three internships throughout their Nichols College experience. I know that may seem overwhelming, but we have a full-time team of five people. That's our Career and Professional Development Center, and their only job is internships now and job placement after. So they'll be there to support you for your internship um, and academic endeavors after. A little bit about athletics. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm a proud alum of Nichols College and I was fortunate enough to play lacrosse. So I do have a lot of bison pride when it comes to our athletic programs. Um, so we are now up to our 22nd varsity sport team with our newest edition eSports. We compete at the division three level and we are a member of the Commonwealth Coast Conference. Um, I know you see 22 varsity programs, think to yourself a relatively small school, around 50% of our students do participate in a varsity sport. So our institution invests a lot of time, a lot of money and a lot of resources into our athletic programs, even for being a small uh, division three school. Dining services. Um, so we do have a brand new dining hall. I am a little bit bitter that they decided to put it in as soon as I graduated in 2019, but this was a three year project that will be completed this fall. So it's absolutely gorgeous in there. Um, if for whatever reason you don't want to utilize our brand new dining hall, we do have some alternative options. We have our Wow Cafe um, and we have a rotational station, really whatever, it depends on the time of the year, what the students are looking for, um, but it'll rotate pretty much monthly. We do also have Jasmine's Cafe and that's our version of a Starbucks slash Dunkin Donuts. I'm a big coffee guy, so I spent a lot of time there. And then if nothing on campus is what you're looking for, you can utilize our Bison Bucks, which is essentially Nichols College currency that the surrounding businesses do accept. Campus life, around 80% of our students do live on campus and they're spread out among one, one of our 11 residence halls. You are guaranteed a spot on campus all four years. So I stayed on campus my entire Nichols College career. Um, really loved it, anywhere from a single bedroom up to a six person suite. So whatever your comfort level is, whatever you're looking for in living and housing on campus, I'm pretty sure can be made available for you. Um, over 40 clubs are offered. With that being said, if none of those 40 are what you're looking for, you always have the ability to start your own as well. And I find that year in and year out, depending on the student's interest, um, that list tends to grow. A little bit about how to apply. Um, so you can find us on our common application and we do also accept the common application. Um, what we'll need as a part of the admissions process, we're gonna need your high school transcript, a letter of recommendation, personal essay, and then SAT or ACT scores if you have them. Um, of course, as you folks are probably aware, um, testing has gone pretty much optional across the board. So we are remaining test optional. That is on somewhat of a sliding scale. Any student above a 2.6, can apply at test optional, no questions asked. Anyone below that 2.6 benchmark can still choose to waive test scores, but at that point we would require an interview to get to know the student a little bit better. So this right here is my contact information in case you guys have any questions. Like I said, we are accepting campus tours, so I hope to see you on the Hill soon. Thank you. Nathan, thanks so much. We're on to our final presenter from Springfield College.
Hi there, everyone. My name is Georgie Maverick Georges. Um, I am one of the admissions counselors at Springfield College. Um, Springfield College is about 135 years old. Um, it originated as a YMCA school. Um, it's also one of, it is also the birthplace of basketball. Um, Springfield College uh, also has close ties to the Y today. It also has a minor um, in YMCA studies. A cool thing about Springfield College is if you ask any students at Springfield College what our mission statement is, they'll all be able to recite back to you what the humanics philosophy is. So to educate students in mind, spirit, and body for service and leadership to others. So at Springfield College, we wanna make sure that all of our students are um, educated holistically. Um, so we want to make sure that our students are as well-rounded as possible. Um, so when they leave college, um, they're uh, as well-rounded um, to go out into the world as they possibly can. So this is a little snapshot of campus. Um, so that's Lake Massasoit, right? Um, right along Lake Massasoit is our residence halls. Right across from the lake is East Campus. So that's 55 acres of forest land. Um, there's an outdoor yoga studio there. There's hiking trails um, that turn to cross country skiing trails in the winter months. There's low ropes courses, high ropes courses. There's equipment rental there. Um, so you can take paddle boards and kayaks out on Lake Massasoit. Um, we are one unified campus, so we don't have a main road cutting across campus. Uh, you can walk from your residence halls to classes in under 10 minutes. Um, we have a bunch of uh, programs going on on campus and we still are doing in-person uh, programming even during the pandemic. Um, of course, we are doing social distancing. Students have to wear masks um, and we're just limiting the amount of students that are participating in programming at a time. Um, we are making sure that there are volunteers um, monitoring the programming to make sure students are maintaining distancing. Um, that's our beautiful quad area. Right now we do have a little beach setup going on with a volleyball court for students, um, as well as like lawn chairs set out for students, uh, little igloos for students to study in a neat luncheon. We have about 4,000 students at Springfield College. About 2,200 of those students are undergraduate students. About 1,000 of those students are graduate students. And then about 1,000 of those students are fully online or at our remote, uh, remote stu uh, at our regional campuses. About 90% of our students are either enrolled in graduate, stu uh, graduate school or employed with, uh, within six months of graduating. We have 40 plus undergraduate degrees at Springfield College. Um, some of our popular degrees are direct entry programs. So occupational therapy, physician assistant, physical therapy, athletic training. Our education programs are definitely pretty popular. Um, sports management is popular as well as sports journalism. Our student faculty to ratio, uh, faculty to student ratio is 12 to one. Um, we have more than 30 study abroad programs at Springfield College as well. And we also have an honors program. We review applications holistically at Springfield College. So we're not just looking at your grades, we're looking at your letters of recommendation. We're looking at your um, involvement, how involved you were, not just at your um, high school, but within your community. Um, so we're looking at everything, uh, your essay, um, your letters of recommendation, I mentioned that. Um, but yeah, everything within your application. Uh, we have like what we'd like to call a three-tier system new athletics. So we do have division three athletics, but we also have intramural sports and club sports. Um, we're within the top 5% of division three athletics. Um, we are pretty easy to apply to. Uh, you apply through the common application. It's a $50 application fee. Um, you pick one of the essays through the common application. Uh, your admissions counselor will, uh, will send over your transcript to us. Um, you'll send one uh, recommendation letter over to us. Um, you can do an optional interview with us as well. Um, and then uh, to do SAT and ACT scores are completely optional for this incoming class for the fall. So 100% of our students coming into Springfield College are getting some sort of aid. So no student is paying full tuition to come to Springfield College, which is super cool. 
So uh, merit-based aid is based off of your grade point average. So every student is getting some sort of merit-based aid at Springfield College. And then need-based aid is based off of the FAFSA. And then if you wanna keep in touch with Springfield College, we're very active on social media. Um, we have an Instagram account and Twitter. Social, uh, we have a Facebook page as well. Um, we do have a Facebook as well as an Instagram page for class of 2025. Um, so if you are uh, interested in coming in for this coming fall, go ahead and follow us um, for the Instagram and the Facebook page. Um, we also uh, just did an accepted student uh, open house this past Sunday, so we do have some recorded sessions on our um, website that are posted, so if you want to go check out those, uh, you're more than welcome to go ahead and do that, but uh, thank you all for listening, and I hope to hear from you all soon. Have a great night, and thank you all. Thank you. We again want to thank all of our presenters for their great information. In the time we have left, we're going to go through a couple of questions that we'll ask each of our presenters to react to. We'll start at the top with our first presenter from the University of Massachusetts Amherst. We'll ask the question, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Yeah, definitely. I think this is a really good question. Um, and I think all of us probably have really great piece of advice and they're probably all really, really similar. Um, but I think my number one piece of advice is um, to just keep in mind that there's not like one perfect fit um, for you going to college. A lot of students are, think there's like one school that they have to go to and it's their, it might be your dream school, but it's like the perfect fit and it's the only school that's going to fit you. Um, but there's actually a lot of schools out there that are the perfect fit for you. There's not just one perfect college for everyone. Um, so I like to tell students to keep that in mind that you're probably going to be able to be very, very happy at a lot of different schools. Um, so don't kind of pigeon your, you know, pigeonhole yourself into just thinking that you um, can only attend uh, one college. There's a lot of great schools out there. You just have to find them. Thank you. Up next, Maine Maritime Academy. Yeah, that's some solid advice. Uh, the one thing that I would say, um, reach out with any questions you have, reach out to your guidance counselors, reach out to all of us in admissions. We are here to help you through this process. And quite frankly, we want you to have fun while you're doing this. This is an exciting time. You get to shop around, see what's out there, um, and just be sure that you're bold and you ask your questions. Thank you. Massachusetts Maritime. Keep your eyes on the prize. Um, you're going into finishing up your junior year. So, you know, finish strong because those are the grades we have to look at when we start looking at people for their application in the fall. Um, additionally, just make sure you keep return on investment top of mind because you're investing a lot of money in your future here and you want to make sure you make the best choice. Thank you. Merrimack College. I would just echo. Um, my colleague over at UMass Amherst is really um, think through the fit. You want to make sure that you're happy at the school that you go to, because if you're not happy, it will definitely affect all other aspects of your life. So just really consider that fit. Thank you. Next up, Nichols College. Yeah, I very much agree um, in saying that just make sure that you're looking at a diverse section of college, you know, big, small, medium sized, primarily business niche schools, much larger liberal arts schools. Because um, you really don't know what the school has to offer until you're physically on the campus. And I know that may be difficult and you students may be looking at institutions far away, um, but just try your best to be as diverse in the college search as you possibly can be. Last but not least, Springfield College. Yeah, and just to echo everything that everyone else has said, um, if you can visit the college, great. I'm. If you can't, then at least try to, you know, utilize the resources that um, everyone has posted online. I mean, if there's anything that we all have learned um, within the past uh, year, almost year and a half, is that um, utilize the technology, right? Um, everyone has learned that uh, we can take videos, right, and post them online. So um, there's virtual tours now, and use those virtual tours to learn more about the college campus, um, get more of a sense of what the campus is like, um, so this way, you know what you're getting into before committing to a college. A lot of great info. We'll move to our next question. What is your favorite event or transition on transition tradition on campus? Starting at the top again, Amherst. 
Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so one of my favorite tr traditions, uh, I almost just said transitions, <laughs> traditions is um, the everything really related to all of our sporting events. Um, I know I just mentioned the hockey team winning the championship, but it really was a really big deal. And all of our students um, were able that were on campus were able to enjoy that. And so we have a lot of different traditions uh, revolving around, um, you know, our football, like tailgating and our marching band actually marches through our campus at all of our home games. Again, this is like a pre COVID world. Obviously, this isn't happening right now. Um, and then during our hockey games, we'll have like whiteout nights and um, like different theme nights and sports is just a really big deal that school spirit is a really big deal here so I really love all those traditions uh, revolving around um, our division one sports. Thank you main maritime. My favorite event or tradition on campus is definitely ship jump. So at the start of every fall semester, this actually happened last August as well. Um, all of our students, whether or not they're in the regiment, whether or not they're actually getting uh, Coast Guard licenses and need that kind of emergency preparedness, they jump off the back of our vessel. It's about a 20 foot drop. Uh, the president goes in first and everybody else after. And it's just, it's fun. Very good. Massachusetts Maritime. Yeah, I think I think my favorite is uh, change of command. So everybody assembles all of our regimental students and they hand over the regimental command to the new um, regimental commander. We haven't been able to do it in person for two years, but it's it's really quite majestic and it's a great special uh, event. Merrimack College. For me, I, it's a toss up between two. So my favorite holiday is Christmas. So every December we have a Christmas tree lighting ceremony and the whole campus gets together. We have, um, you know, not carols, but we have a prayer on campus and then we follow that with some ice skating and a lot of great food. And um, my second one would be homecoming when all the alumni come onto campus for the homecoming game, we do tailgating and it's definitely a lot of fun. Everyone is really passionate about that too. Thank you. Next up, Nichols College. Yeah, like I mentioned during my presentations, we put a lot of emphasis on athletics for being a relatively small division three school. Um, and then it says this sort of sense of school pride. So in the middle of our campus, we have this big brass bison. Um, we're the Nichols College bison. So it's like this enormous bison that sits right in the center of campus, literally from any point on campus, I feel like you can see it. Um, but any major sporting event, whether it be a conference playoff game, um, or just one where we have that sense of pride. It tends to gather around there post the athletic event. And it really is just a real sense of, of school pride and kind of the spot to be on, on campus. Last but not least, Springfield College. Yeah, so uh, my favorite, I guess, tradition would be um, hoop hall is my favorite. Uh, it's a big basketball tournament that uh, Springfield College puts on. Um, the top high school basketball teams compete at Hoop Hall um, and NBA players have played it in it in the past. Uh, LeBron James has actually come to Hoop Hall. I think it was two years ago. Um, so it's pretty cool. And our sports management students actually put the whole thing together, so. Very good information. And we thank all of our presenters today for joining, taking time out to share information. We would ask our students to complete a quick four question survey so we can refine these sessions for the future. Also note there are more sessions from more institutions on the website. And again, a plug for the recording will be available at strivescan.com slash FRHSD. Again, thanks to all presenters and everyone have a great day.